Hello, everybody. Uh, I just want to welcome you here tonight, and we're doing something a little different. We're actually interviewing somebody who's on the front lines of the COVID-19 battle. So I want to introduce Jen Padua to you. She and her husband, Raddy, are both uh, actually worship leaders in our worship ministry. So you've probably seen her up front with him. They would have been there most recently, three weeks ago, and they were supposed to actually lead us on Easter Sunday morning. But Jen works at Northwood Manor, and there has been an outbreak there of COVID-19, so she felt it best that they stay away. But Jen actually got her Bachelor of Science in Nursing back in the Philippines, but of course that wasn't accepted here. So she did the one-year bridge program and she completed that in 2017. So as I said, she's now working, working at Northwood. Now my associate pastor comes up with some great ideas and he thought you know, it would be a good idea to interview somebody that is on the front lines. So that's why we have Jen here tonight. So first of all, Jen, I just wanted to ask you, how are you doing? Yeah. I'm not going to try to put on a brave face, Pastor Greg. I've been crying a lot. No, I, it, it must be tough down there. Yeah, well, I, I read that, um, I think Northwood did a press release that 80 people uh, have been off already. So workload has been doubled. It's been tripled, actually, and it's been really, really physically exhausting for the staff who okay. are left. So what was a normal day like for you before COVID-19 and what um, is it like now? You, you asked me what my least favorite question is. This is the one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because it makes me picture out what it was like before and, and now like before I would come into work I'd be smiling, probably singing under my breath. Uh, now it's just, it's, uh, I think the most, the worst enemy we have is not the virus. It's it's the fear that we all have, right? And yeah. If you agree, the fear, fear is a really, really bad uh, enemy that I'm trying to cast away because uh, a lot of people have chosen to to abandon the work because because of fear of getting it. And I'd be lying if I if I say I, I didn't have that. I, I feel it every day. Yes. I know. It's God's grace, really. I, I keep asking myself, why am I still here? Of all the units, I'm working in a COVID unit. Oh. So we have, um, we have 19 positive cases in the floor. There's actually two floors now with COVID. One floor has 13 residents. Okay. Four positive. And the other floor, which is the floor where I'm in, we have 19 positive cases. So, so it's really scary. Um, but, but God's been good because, like, when I go to work, uh, I can still function normally. I can still think logically. Um, the, the difficulty is wearing the, the personal protective equipment while having to do nursing care because it's really suffocating having to wear um, the mask and a, and a face shield right in front of you, um, gowning and all of that. We can't breathe right. It makes us lightheaded and, and dizzy and, and a headache. So that's, that's the challenge, really. Great. Yeah. So your husband, Raddy, wasn't able to make air-conditioned visors for you? Oh, my gosh. Some fans on the visors would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> so now... What's your family doing in this time? How are they doing even? The Raddy and Tyra are, are doing okay. Um, he just spoke with um, the HR today, telling them about our living situation, and he's going to be on EI probably by next week. Okay. And Tyra has um, Google Meets with her teacher and her class every day now for an hour, so that's good. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Uh, the hardest part is really being physically away from them. You can't even, you can't even touch them. 
you know, it's uh, like Raddy and I see each other. He drops me off to work. I can't even kiss him or hold his hand. It's just the physical distance is is really tough. And, and you're not even living at home right now, either. Yeah. No, um, I've been here. Well, when we found out that the floor that I was in Monday night had 19 positives, that's when I decided I shouldn't be going home anymore. So they, um, I, I came here straight to the hotel. Okay. And I haven't been home since. Wow. Well, yeah. how have you seen God at work in this time? This is my favorite question. All right. Yeah, because I don't even know where to begin, Pastor Greg. Like the world says um, you need to have passion and will and, and determination to do, to do what you're called to do. But that's all God now. I don't have that anymore. Um, it's, it's all God carrying me. I don't, I don't know. You're going to get me crying too. Yeah, it's just hard to imagine what it's like for all of you going into that every day petrified that you're going to get sick yourselves and then the separation from your family yeah. we've been doing these uh, daily devotions and every saturday the it's actually someone sharing their testimony of how they've seen god working through this time so there are stories everywhere of what god is doing and we just pray for you every day that you will stay strong and healthy there so what what, what are some specific things that we can do like to support or pray for you and your co-workers i've got my time hmm. out um so i think for the for the there's 17 of us right here pastor greg and i think they they need a lot of uh, support just to let them know that somebody's praying for them somebody's supporting them I'm, I'm quite concerned that these people are barely hanging on and there's only a handful of people left in northwood that if these if they break down and and stop going to work pretty soon there's not going to be anyone left that's right. Yeah, and um, so uh, uh, Jane, Jane actually brought in some fruits yesterday. It was very nice of her, and we were texting each other. And um, I think God breathed in the idea to me to do something for the healthcare workers here. Okay. To show them that, you know, somebody's thinking of them, somebody's supporting them. Just little gestures already help. So she, Jane brought some fruits and we repacked it and we put a, a little label that said um, uh, to all healthcare workers, thank you for the work you do. And, and it's made them really happy. Mark also kept in touch with me and he said if there's anything that the youth group can do. And I said the same thing, just like little tiny gestures to support the healthcare workers, just to keep them going. Okay. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> It only takes one anxiety attack for one one healthcare worker to say, I'm done. <laughs> and they don't show up tomorrow. And that's another body lost. Yeah, so. Um, so these yeah. people that you mentioned, like people might not know, they're other members of our worship ministry. So it's great to see people from our different communities mm -hmm. in the church helping to look out for one another. Yeah, it's, I'm very thankful for that. People are really reaching out. What about the residents of Northwood? What can we do to support and pray for them? Yeah, just, I really hope that they will bounce back, Pastor Greg. Some of them, some of them, it's amazing. They're asymptomatic. They are just walking around like they don't have the virus. Okay. And some of them too are just, also struggling and it's just so sad to see them that they don't have family around and you know they can't breathe well and it's just oh gosh it's heartbreaking i wish their family was around with them and i just hope that when like i hate to say this but when they when they do go 
because they're so vulnerable, they're so frail that they, you know, yes. they won't, they won't have, uh, they won't be struggling for for air. Do you know what I mean? Like being suffocated. Because the problem with the COVID is the the lungs, and it feels like people can breathe. That's why they need the oxygen and the ventilators, which we. Which That's we don't. Right. And then what your family, how can we pray and support you guys? Yeah, Raddy's been a real trooper. He's, uh, he's a guy, kind of guy who doesn't really worry about that. So um, just please pray for him that he'll continue to keep that, you know, very nonchalant attitude. Okay. <laughs> he's, uh, he's been my support. And then he has taken on a project to try and support you guys a little bit more as far yeah. as safety goes too. Yeah, even like this is one thing that um, God's been doing through us too. It's like he's it, it, it give credit to God because he's the one giving us the idea to help others. Uh, he breathed in the idea to Raddy to make these face shields just out of nowhere. It started from me. He wanted to make one for me. And then we were both like, "Why? We should just make this for everyone." <laughs> and then, That's right. Yeah. So he's made over. Oh gosh, he's made over like seventy, eighty, I think already. I'm picking up some elastic tonight at Atlantic Fabrics. That's twenty-five meters or something like that. So he's going to be busy for a while. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That will. Oh, that's long because we only need like probably I don't know how long is that <laughs> 25 meters will make a lot <laughs> yeah it will no that's great he'll be able to help out a lot of other staff with yeah. that yes. so is there anything else you'd like to share before I pray um nothing really oh I do want to share a verse where was that I was opening my Bible the other day because trying trying to trying to get rid of the fear in my heart. So I was gonna open Psalm twenty three because it's one of my favorite verses. And I was flipping through my Bible, yes. and it just it it went to Psalm forty four, and I was like, okay, what is this? And um, it said, um, verse Psalm forty four, verse six says, "I put no trust in my bow." My sword does not bring me victory. And this is when, when the Israelites were given the land and it was God who delivered the, the enemies. And I, I replaced the word bow with protective equipment. Okay. And I replaced the word sword with hand washing. Excellent. So it goes, I put no trust in my protective equipment and my hand washing does not bring me victory. And fast forward to that, verse 8, in God we make our boast all day long. So that gives me, and I hope it will also give um, inspiration to everyone listening, that we, we can wash our hands so many times. As nurses, I can wear all the masks I want. I'll, I need, but at the end of the day, it's really God who keeps us safe from the virus, right? That's right. Yes. Sometimes we forget to wash our hands and touch our eyes, and oh, we still don't have the COVID. Why? Because God keeps us safe. He'll watch over you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks so much. Anxiety. Thanks so much, Jen. Thank this you, Pastor Greg. It's going to be helpful to a lot of people. Let's pray. Father, uh, we just uh, thank you so much for the amazing gift of life. We thank you for the fact that you decided to form this world so that we would be able to live in it. And we thank you that even though our world became broken very early on and sin entered into the picture, that you had a plan all along to bring redemption, to bring salvation through becoming one of us in the person of your son and father we thank you for this past weekend when we got to celebrate his death his burial and his resurrection 
And now, Father, we realize that his resurrection is what gives us the power in this world today. And as we look at what's going on in your world, Father, as we look at the spread of this horrible virus, as we look at the deaths that are taking place, we realize that it's time for you to step up and show how you are going to work all things for good for those who love you. And Father, I just thank you so much for Jen. I thank you for all her co-workers. Uh, we, we just feel for them and we pray for them as they're there right on the front lines working with COVID patients. Our prayer, Father, is that you keep them safe, that you keep them strong, not only physically, but mentally, because she talked about how you know, nurses aren't showing up at work. They just become overwhelmed with the anxiety. And Father, I just pray for all of us like, that we would heed the way that Jen has reworded that psalm, that we would use protective equipment when necessary, that we would be washing our hands as well. So I pray for Jen. I pray for Raddy and their daughter Tyra as they are all separated during this time. And Father, just continue to strengthen them through your power that is within them. We pray all of this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.